All right, welcome one and all. We are glad that you are here. Uh, if you're here with us live, uh, we're glad you're here. If you're joining us online, uh, welcome. We are thrilled that you have decided to uh, worship with us this morning. So last week we started a series, Ugly Christmas Sweater. We, we all sort of love, it's a love-hate relationship maybe, the ugly Christmas sweater. I thought about preaching in that ridiculous thing, and uh, I don't want to make anybody sick. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, it just gets a, it'll just get a little warm, so I had to, I had to remove it. But it's a shame, because I'm not sure how ugly that thing was. That was, kind of, that was kind of beautiful. I mean, it came with a belt and everything. It's very fancy, very fancy. So, we're, uh, so we started this series of Ugly Christmas Sweater, and uh, we, like, we, may like the, we may like the Ugly Christmas Sweater, but we also, during this time of year, we want to remember the joy and all that, that comes with the arrival of of Christ, and that's not always so easy this time of year. Um, I know we're busy, we can become stressed out, and for some of us, the weather doesn't exactly help with our uh, good attitudes and our good moods. So, so we're talking about that, and yet you guessed it, especially if you can read. I'm not sure how much of a guess that is, but last week we talked about uh, ugly thoughts and how that can lead to ugly actions, of course, and this morning we want to talk about ugly words. Um, God wants us to use our words to build others up. So I want to just, uh, I've got a few words for you and you just shout, shout out the response or maybe this evokes some kind of emotion in you um, and you can just shout them out. So what if I said the word snow? Yes. yes we do. It starts snowing and now he's trained me like I think of Jeff when it starts because he just, he loves, 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 loves the snow. He, he does pray for the snow like Lord send us snow early this year and lots of it. So He's, uh, he's one of those people. So, snow, so he loves it. So I heard Jeff. What else? Snow? What? Fun. fun? All right, fun. I heard. I heard. Who said fun? Where's he at? I heard it. I thought it was. All right, you're not going to. Oh, oh, that was Bob back there. Okay. Um, all right, snow fun. True. Um, all right. Uh, what else we got? How about hot chocolate? Marshmallows. Marshmallows. Good. Marsh. I was instructed that it's not marshmallows. It's marshmallow, I guess. I don't know. Um, this week. So... Um, for, the, for the, those that came to the men's breakfast yesterday, if I said bear, yeah. delicious, <laughs> delicious, we ate bear, um, but you smoked bear and it was amazing. Um, all right, let's see, where's my list? I lost my, okay, Christmas lights, decorations? Tree. Tree. tree, anything else? I heard a lot of tree over here. I love them, star, good. I love the decorations, not so fun to put up, but I'm happy when, when, it's, when it's done, I love them. Um, all right, eggnog? Where do we stand on the whole eggnog bourbon. controversy? <laughs> I did hear, I think I heard a bourbon somewhere. Um, eggnog. I, a lot of people don't like eggnog. I, I was shocked by that. Who, who's anti-eggnog? Can I see? I was really, really? That's, I, yeah, that's a puzzle to me. I don't understand that. Okay, so, but I guess it's a normal thing. Uh, mistletoe? Yes. Now, if you're young, if you're, you know, a, a millennial, or what's probably uh, under the millennial is a, uh, what's, what's the generation after millennial? Z, Z, um, I think it's Z, there's different names. It, you know, they decide 40 years from now what the actual term is. Um, they would probably say mistletoe, creepy, right? Everything's creepy. <laughs> if you're a few years younger than me, it's, everything is just weird and creepy. So, and it's mistletoe, not what some think mistletoed. It's a different, that's a different thing. I don't know if that's a custom somewhere, but that's, I have different thoughts about the mistletoe. All right, not a fan of that. 
Uh, and then, um, and then of course, I had to put on the list fruitcake. Anybody, any pro fruitcake people? For really? Okay, all right. I'm learning all kinds of things. All right, pro fruitcake. Now, did anybody pass? Did anybody pass last month when my mom brought in the fruitcake? That's my that's my favorite. Anybody pass because they're like fruitcake's awful? All right, I had a few people pass. Ha ha! Tricked you. It's a delicious sugary treat disguised as a disgusting fruitcake. It's uh, I don't know the real name, but it's not a fruitcake. So uh, I mean, people just walk past walk past it. Um, every time, and then I'm like, mwah, right? Um, I've never done this ever in a sermon. I don't know where this came from. Not sure what this is, mwah, all right? So sometimes these, uh, these words, these ideas, and the legit fruitcake, I don't get it, but you know, I'll, I'll meet you halfway if you try some eggnog or something, I don't know. Um, but somebody said, uh, I, you know, I like eggnog. Eggnog just does not like me. You don't have to amen that or give any indication whatsoever, but... Uh, whether you like it or whether it likes you is a completely different story. So, so sometimes these words can evoke a response or an emotion or a reaction, maybe excitement, uh, often disgust. So words have meaning. That's not a surprise to anyone in the place this morning. But I want to remind you and encourage you that words have meaning. And we should indeed be careful how we use them. Ugly Christmas sweaters encouraged. Ugly words. We want to discourage that this morning. So this is uh, something that appears all over Scripture. I mean, sometimes there's a topic or there's something that you like, and, and you're like, well, let me find some scripture, and the scripture might address it, but it's not abundant. I mean, you can find, uh, I, I mean, just all kinds of your mouth and the words that are spoken. I mean, it's, it's Genesis to Revelation. It's, it's all over the scripture. So it is an important topic. We could do a long, long, long series on just the tongue and, and the words that we speak. Um, but we'll, we'll take a look at Proverbs 18.21. Uh, familiar to most of you, Proverbs 18.21, the scripture says that the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit cake. No. Uh, those, I just, that's, you know, it's the theme. Uh, the tongue has the power. Thanks for whoever laughed. That was generous of you and kind. Because um, it was an awful joke. All right, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So eat its fruit is the biblical way of saying you, you will receive payment for, for that thing. If, if you sow a good thing, you'll reap uh, a good thing. And so really, what, what a powerful scripture that your tongue has the power of life and death. And, uh, you know, we could, we could range from, you know, all kinds of uh, small things to literally life and death, but your tongue has power in it. Maybe we'll get into that more uh, a little bit later and what exactly that means. Um, but words have consequences. And uh, I guess, I, you know, I guess we could put it this way. Say the wrong thing to the wrong person, and that could be a matter of life and death. But it could also be the end of a relationship. It could be the end of a marriage. It could be the, the, the death of a friendship. Um, and in, in some cases, I mean, depends on, I, I suppose, uh, of course, who it is and the words that you speak. But um, words have grave consequences and, and are, are powerful. If you think about God designed this whole thing and the, he knew that words would have power, right? So I don't know if they still use this expression, but when I was little, they used to say this thing, right? And, and everything has context. Come on, help me out, somebody, right? Everything has a context. So this is appropriate and good and right and meaningful in a certain context. Uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So that's, the, you know, the parents, they still say that? Parents still teaching their kids that thing? Um, so obviously they say that the kid's being picked on at school or whatever, or somebody said something unkind, and the, the wise adult encourages them that, you know, it, it actually doesn't physically hurt. I mean, people are going to say things. And it, it doesn't, you know, it could, it could, they could bring physical harm to you. They didn't do that. They said something that you weren't a big fan of. And at, at the end of the day, that doesn't, that doesn't really hurt you. In that context, how many of you would agree that's true? It's true. They're just words, right? Um, but there is an, another context, and we do know that words have ramifications, and and that words really can cut like a knife. So you tell your kid that little that little proverb. Why? To toughen up. It's okay. 
life is hard, people are going to say things that you don't like, right? That's true. But, but words also carry tremendous power, and God knew that. And think about, we can look at the words that we speak and our ability to communicate the way we do as a responsibility. God has given us an incredible responsibility, one that, that we can each uh, shoulder, one that we can, we can each use to change the world around us. So it's really, it's a powerful thing, and it's a powerful uh, responsibility. So again, words have the power of life and death. We speak to one another. We can bring damage. We can bring hurt. Um, the wrong or the right word can, can change a life. We can speak life-giving things, and it can make a huge difference in someone's life. Um, I think I've told you the story before. Uh, so I was trying to think about instances or words or, or things that were said. Many things. Um, but I've shared the story before that, that there was a friend that I, that I really respected uh, when I went to Bible school. My mom's already nodding. I can see her out of the corner of my eye. Self-esteem is still trying to recover a little bit. Uh, but my mom, is, my mom knows uh, what I'm, the story I'm about to tell. Was a good friend of mine, and after about two years of Bible school, they said, "Well, you know what? You're not that you're called to that. that. You know, you're obviously God wants you to do something, but but I don't see you in a street position or anything like that. And you know, just just telling you as a friend, right? And uh, and I think I think she was well meaning, and that's great when you're trying to decide to go to Bible school or where you're trying to decide where the money's going to come from, or should I move to Columbus?" Some people just passed out online. Um, wait a minute, did he make a sports reference? He made a sports reference. I, I'm not a big sports fan, but on the third week of November, I lived in, I'm from Michigan and I lived in Columbus, Ohio for two years. You can bet on the third week of November, I'm a huge Michigan fan, right? You know, like that's a game, I don't, like, I don't miss that game. So, but I moved to Columbus, Ohio for two years and then to be told, really you wasted your time. That was, devastating. It was crushing. I mean, uh, I, don't, uh, I, I don't have the words to communicate uh, the power of what that did to me. Now, thanks be to God, I did not give up. Come on, somebody. Amen. Like, it, 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 was, it, it was rough. And it wasn't like, it, you know, like, I'll sometimes have a rough day, and, and something magical happens when you go to sleep. Does anybody like, like just like it could, the world could be horrible and just magic happens, whether I slept well or whether I didn't. It's just like the, when, the, when the morning comes, it's like, you know what, I'm going to press on, right? But this, this lasted days and days and days. Uh, I did have the opportunity then to preach uh, at Bible school and to her said, like that, that was helpful. And to her credit, like that's, it's not easy to say I was wrong. Like, she remembered that she said that it was probably months uh, prior to that at that time. And, uh, and to her credit, and I'm grateful. that. It but it wouldn't have mattered. You with me? But I'm grateful that she said, I was wrong about you. I, 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 made, I made an assertion about you that, that I wasn't sure about. I don't know if it's because I just didn't strut around like a pretend rooster and act like a big shot televangelist and, and, and Christianese and, and trite phrases in every conversation. I was just waiting for the opportunity, right? Like, I'm just, like, if I said, you know, when you preach, it is like, it's like someone firing a gun. 
It's, yeah. it's like someone shooting off a pistol. He said, but if you work hard and you apply yourself, you can be a cannon. Oh. Ooh. Nice. Whoa, that's pretty good. Somebody in the room said, well, what happened? <laughs> Where's the cannon? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll unleash the cannon here maybe, maybe a little bit later. What a cool thing to say, though, right? So you get discouraged and you're like, man, I might be, I might be a pistol, but there's a cannon in there somewhere, right? Um, so I can think of other things. You know, I tried to think of encouraging words that my parents spoke to me. And the truth of the matter is, and I'm not exaggerating, it's just full of encouraging words. I probably took it for granted, and it was over and over and over and over again. They probably needed to more often say, you know, you're kind of a punk. You know, you're not a, the big shot that you think you are. Like, that, that probably would have helped me. It brought me back a little bit, you know. But the encouragement was so abundant there that, that it's hard to, 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 to remember and even recall um, one thing. Oh, yeah, it's just mom and dad saying great things about their son again. <laughs> You get out of the house a couple of years and you're like, where's the people that are telling me I'm awesome again? Where are those, where are those people? I want to find those people, right? So your words make a difference. You probably have memories of your own, I'm sure. So we can say things that give life. We can say things that bring death or damage or hurt people. And we often overlook the simple truth that our words have that kind of power. And so, you know, we're preparing you to meet with your relatives and we're preparing you to gather with many people and to fight the crowds in the stores. Do we still fight crowds in stores? Or do we just all point and click? Right? Um, so, but, but there could be some stress associated with that. Uh, that helps. Because if they walk out with all the packages and the sleet and snow and junk and your car is freezing, like, you know, auto start will make your life better. Can I get a witness in the place this morning? <laughs> Amen. Somebody's never amened anything a preacher has ever said. And I said, auto start. And they were like, amen, the first one. All right. Um, so I want to help prepare you. And you know, the old, you know the old saying, like, everybody's got a family member that you're not looking forward to seeing at Christmas. Everybody's got that family member that they dread uh, sitting down to dinner with. And if you don't, you can finish this for me, right? You, you're probably that family member. That's you. That's, you're, you're probably that one. Right, so we want to prepare you for the holidays, and, uh, and, and we want to be intentional and think about the words that we speak. We want to take an effort to avoid ugly words and speak in ways that leave people encouraged. Man, an encouraging word, just a couple things. Can ju- I mean, it, it's the difference between life and death. I, I know I've shared before that, you know, the Lord doesn't speak to me. Uh, all the time, or never audibly through my ears. Um, but I do remember uh, a, a few occasions where the Lord just spoke a couple words. Like, so, I don't remember what, it, what, okay, or something like that. Or, I love you. This is going to work out. Everything is going to be okay, right? So just a few difficult conversations or about the words we speak and our tongue. And so we want to take a look at James here. James chapter 3. Um, James is a leader in the... And he wasn't on board right away. I think that's so interesting. James was like, eh, still wondering about this Jesus guy. Later, he did, um, he did come to faith in, in Christ and was a leader in the church. And so imagine how the, the early church was, must have been frail in, in many ways. And people are learning to 
to interact in, in this new thing called the church and Gentiles and Jews are, are mixing together and that, was, that had to be weird at first. Um, different cultures, different backgrounds. Um, some things that the, uh, that, the, that the Gentiles did were horribly offensive to the Jews and so they're to get along and so James has some important things to say about the tongue in our mouth. Uh, look here in uh, verse three, he says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses, to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small You know, somebody threw a, a cigarette out the car window or something, and, and that caused miles and, and miles of, of acres, acres and acres of, of damage, square miles. Um, then finally, verse 6, the tongue also is a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. Think about that. The tongue also is a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person. Sets the whole course of his life. Sets the whole course of his life on fire. And then, because James isn't being dramatic enough, he says, and itself is set on fire by hell. Well, why don't you tell us how you really feel, James? I mean, what? Uh, I mean, your tongue is set on fire by hell itself. Uh, James learned some good preaching skills from growing up in the same household as, as Jesus, right? Um, so obviously, you know, you, you just read it with me, but he makes the point that there are these large things that are controlled by small things. Uh, horses are large and powerful and can be controlled by a bit in, in their mouth. is pretty small. If we're not careful, it can do tremendous damage. Overstating it. What do you think? I mean, preachers are sometimes to overstating things, maybe exaggerating. Um, it's not lying when you're a preacher. It's just exaggerating, and it's for effect. <laughs> it's necessary to get the point through, right? Um, but but the tongue can cause. Uh, enormous problems. How many of you ever had like a, an email or a text come through? And, and, and admittedly, we, we don't always understand uh, the tone. It doesn't always come through in an email or a text, right? How, how do you know that, preacher? Why do you say, why do you know it? Because we learn the hard way, right? <laughs> we, they say we learn best by our mistakes. Well, uh, I've learned, right? But how many of you know that if you, even if it's the nasty one, if you wait a little bit, your response is much better. Mm -hmm. Say, well, you know what? A great idea count to 10 thing? I always thought that was stupid. on earth <laughs> about ten experience the same thing, right? If I'd only that's like, oh that's why that's it's not the magic of counting or like the way you form the tongue and the way the oxygen leaves the lungs or something weird like that, it's like, just take a second, ju just wait. And I can think of a few times where if only I would have 10 seconds. You know this because um, 10 seconds, oh, ooh, ooh, mmm. 
probably, that's just going to turn out well, right? We've all, we've all done it. We all know what that's like. So um, taking a little time, waiting. Something with, that's potentially damaging or hurtful or destructive uh, to escalate into something even worse. Without restraint, our words can lead us deeper, lead us deeper. a little bit. I want to come up with my own saying, but I, I've, I've thought that for quite a while, it needs to be clever or something. You can, you know, you can take that as a homework assignment if you like, but there's something that I learned and sadly from ministry that, um, and, 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 and people that you're trying to help and within ministry, when someone says, you know what, this thing happened, and I just thought to myself, I don't care anymore. I've mentioned this before, I think. I saw that text come through. I saw that email come through. And you know what, I thought, you know what, I don't care. I just don't care. In my experience, when, when you say, I don't care anymore, you will care. It'll be later. But when you make a decision based on, you know what, I just don't care anymore. Like, think, think about, think about, we've all said that. But think about, like, I cared 20 minutes ago, but now, suddenly, I don't. Is that really the smartest move? Like, that's what, if we just thought for a moment, 20 minutes ago, I, I cared. Uh, but right now, I, I just don't care. And very, very often, I don't know that it's 100%, but very, very often, they end up caring that thing that they said or that they didn't care anymore they wish they could take it back so if you can find a clever way to to say that um you know i'm all ears. i'm still getting credit for it don't get it's my as my idea um but but we could make it sound a whole lot a whole lot better we make a little make a little catchy proverb out of it um but that but that's what we're talking about if if you take some time to think about um, you can avoid further damage. And when the thought comes to your mind, I hope that you hear my voice uh, when, the, when the next time comes and you think to yourself, I just don't care anymore. Remember, good old Petty said, you might want to take 10. And just think, th th think it through. All right, so James, he, uh, he lists these... Uh, Animals and, and, and creatures that are Let's go ahead and, and take a look at verse 8. But no man can tame the tongue. Think about it. That's strong language. No man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. I mean, that, that, those are powerful words, James. Um, evil. And he says, no one can tame been fun to prepare uh, this ahead of time and, and send out little story about a time where you wish, whoops, I wish I hadn't said that. Uh, you think you could come up with something? I can think of, I, now I can think of more than one. That I have no trouble remembering. There's a whole bunch of times I wished I'd thought about that a little bit more. Um, I think I've shared the story before, going back to Bible school days again when I had a job and my boss came up and was talking with me about something that was sort of unpleasant. And the was to uh, try to say something humorous. It was kind of like, I don't like this stress and this tension. This is, I'm uncomfortable with this. So I, I tried to say something a little humorous to, you know, breathe a little air into the situation. Anybody, anybody ever tried that? I don't use it every time, you know, but it's... It's a tool used it's a good tool, uh, to be used sparingly, um, and it, it totally backfired. The way it came out 
was, was, was not only really not funny, but, and it's like, oh yeah, that sounded really bad after I said it. It was insulting to the boss, who was already had some serious things to talk about, and he blew up. I've never before or since had a boss freak me out and think I was gonna have to defend myself physically, you know. Uh, like, he was raging, stark raving mad, and I, I had no intention of, dude, that was unintentional. Come on, husbands, are you with me? So it's a, like, that's, that came out way different. Yeah. Hey, if you're watching online, uh, the, the husbands in the room are like, <laughs> so it feels good to know I'm not alone. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't solve the problem, but it's nice to know I'm not the only, the only one. But uh, it, that, that came out wrong. You know, so if we would, we would think a little, take a little time, think about it, um, and, uh, and prepare for what we're going to say. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out this morning and give you a couple ideas about uh, before you say something, um, how about you can run it through this, uh, we can call it a, a test. Um, you can ask yourself, is what I'm about to say honoring to God? Does this make God look better or does this make God look worse? Does, does this, uh, do, will this, will this move people closer to the Lord or does it hurt my witness? Well, I don't use that language a lot, but I like that expression. You know what I mean if I say hurt your witness? We need to start using that more. Okay, you already know it. Um, we need to start using that more. That's a good, that's a good expression. Hurt, hurt your witnesses. You're trying to show and lead an example in your life what a Christian is like. And, and there are those, whether conscious or subconsciously, are looking for the mistakes and the errors and the faults in you, which you're, of course, going to have. But hurting your witnesses, whoops, I just, uh, I just uh, uh, caused that person to recoil from Christ rather than be attracted to him. I think it was Charles Finney said that Christians are the number one reason that someone would come to Christ and be attracted to Christ. Uh, their example and, and what they, how they live and, 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 and their lives and how they live them are the number one reasons why people would be attracted to Christ. Um, but he went on to say the Christians are also the number one reason that Christians are repelled from the gospel and won't give an audience to someone that Um, saying something that, that makes somebody think, oh, you Christians, right? Now, sometimes they say that just because they don't know what else to say and they're backed into a corner and they, they don't want to admit that they're on to something, right? So they, they, have to, they, they have to make excuses, but we don't want to give them any more ammunition than... Uh, than <laughs> this is already supplied to them by the enemy and their own human nature. Okay, so is what I'm about to say honoring... To God. Number two, well, what I'm about to say, honor the person that I'm saying it to. Is it respectful? Is it polite? Is it, is it helpful? Is it encouraging? Again, an encouraging word. Encouraging words are so powerful. Um, you could ask yourself, what if somebody said this to me this way? How, how would I take it? Uh, I want to launch into different personality types there. That's an interesting thing. Uh, you, you know the different personality types. You can't expect God's creation to boil down human beings into four different, maybe five different personality types. Well, you can. I mean, you can. It's helpful. It's helpful. Um, somebody said, you know, really? There's six. I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. But generally speaking, um, you know, if you're, if you're one personality type, uh, I have found, and it has helped me, and it's helped me in ministry and, and, all, and other walks of life, um, that if this personality type says something to this a different personality type, it's perceived differently, yeah. right? And you can say things, uh, and the way that you communicate to someone of a different personality type is uh, you can say it differently. Like if you're not mean to people, if a person is kind of that person, like I would say a D or a I don't know what a D is in the other in the other things, but you can kind of be mean to them. They they can take it. No, that's against what we're talking about. We don't want to be mean. But but that was supposed to be funny. It wasn't. Um, it was just, it was just confusing, which is really what we want. I should have thought about that longer. Should have thought about that. Should have thought about that longer. But, but some personality types are a little, are a little, um, they get, to some people, they can come off like they're kind of rough or, or curt, uh, or, or rude. And that, that's not how they mean it. So if you're of the same, if it's the same personality types, I think it can sound awful. And, uh, and that, that's not, that's not how they mean it. So personality type does. 
I think it matters some, and if you, uh, and, and understanding your own is, is really helpful too. That was like the bigger revelation of what your own is. It turns out that uh, my personality type, um, one of the questions they ask is talkative. One of the boxes you check is talkative. And I thought, that doesn't sound like me. It doesn't sound like me at all. After all, I'm an introvert. Pretend you. An extrovert. I still don't understand. Somebody explain that. All right, so does it honor the person that I'm speaking with? How would we like it? That's where I was going with personality. How would we like it if somebody said that to us? And sometimes we're like, yeah, no, that wouldn't bother me at all. And, and, it, and it might not, so. Um, and then the third thing is, am I about, and we touched on this, but am I about to say something that I will regret, all right? Um, is, this, is this thing going to haunt me? And maybe I don't care right now, but am I, am I going to care later? I, I can tell you. You might not admit it, but I'm, the, I'm the, the preacher, so I'll just confess. You know, I've been upset at times and thought, uh, I mean, it's really, it's, it's shocking if you're, if, if you're thinking about how your, how your brain works. And, uh, and, I, and we should be. Uh, what's the word, Jenny, what's the word? Uh, metacognition. metacognition, thank you. Metacognition, thinking about your thinking. And there have been times where I've been upset and I thought, you know what? I have this idea. This is the solution. But it makes all the sense in the world because I didn't act on it. This happened. Okay, it's happened more than once. All right, we, we're going to be honest this morning. It's happened more than once, and I will tell you, uh, it's shocking how a half an hour later you're like, "Thank God I did not do that thing." Like, that would have, that would have, just a, a short time ago, that seemed perfectly reasonable, like a good idea. And, and it was horrible. That would have been a, a, an incredibly stupid and foolish thing to do. That's me 20 minutes in the future, or looking back 20 minutes in the past, if that, and going, Ooh. glad I didn't, glad I didn't act that quick. Anybody, anybody want to admit with me, ever have that? But you thought of it. I'm just proud of you that you thought of it, right? Like, you caught it, like, hmm, I was a complete psycho 20 minutes ago. <laughs> It's amazing. It's amazing how fast I can, I can wise up, right? So am I going to say something that I might regret? Um, so, so especially this time of year, wear your ugly Christmas sweaters, but don't have an ugly uh, uh, attitude and don't speak ugly words. Let's be representatives of, uh, of joy. Uh, let's be God's ambassadors and let's not sabotage situations when we, when we speak. Uh, let's, let's continue on with James. Um, James goes on to say, let's jump to verse uh, 9. Talking about the tongue again, and there's lots I would like to say about this, but we'll just, uh, I'll probably move past my own comments quickly, but I want to get James in. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, uh, our, our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. I know, we're working on it. I'm, I'm working on that. Um, my brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? That's what's called a rhetorical question. What is the expected answer? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, no, they cannot flow from the same spring. Uh, verse 13. Oh, oh sorry. Did, all right, the verse came up so fast, I thought we already read it. All right, my brothers, can a fig tree... Bear olives, all right? Again, rhetorical question. Or a grape, a grape vine bear figs? The expected answer is of course no. Neither can a, salt can a salt spring produce fresh water. All right. Um, so you see the imagery. I don't think I need to explain that. So, so each year, Christians attend, you know, Advent services and, and decorate their house with, with Merry Christmas, and we put joy up and... Noel and season's greetings and maybe our little nativity out there and then we cut and slash people and, and wound them with our tongues. James says, if, you're, if, if your walk with Christ is genuine, you need to be concerned about what's flowing out of your, out of your mouth. Um, let's, let's go ahead to Luke 6. We want to get Jesus in here. Um, 
the words we use are a window into our hearts. It reveals, um, you know, kind of what's kind of what's going on on the on the inside of us. So look here at Luke six, uh, verse forty five. Jesus is speaking. He says, the good man brings up good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings up evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Great verse. Love that verse. That one, you know, if you check yourself up, up against that. And it's, it's, it's really not even just a matter of, and this really gets to the point, it's really not just a matter of watch what we say and watch the words that we use but jesus like like he's so good at doing reveals that there's something much deeper and internal going on that it's not just watch the words that you speak and watch the things that you say but jesus directs our attention to the reality that maybe there's something going on in our heart and that's where those words come from so i'll i try to i try to speak Good words. I try to not damage the people around me. Um, I, I have said things in my home when I'm stressed or angry or upset or lacking sleep or whatever. Um, and and while that might not be the my my core, my like who I am, but it's still what's going on inside of me. At that time, that came out. I mean, if you know, if you're if you're going through difficult times. That might come out, and you might lash out at the people around you. Um, probably the, the 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 closest ones that are near you. I know you don't know what I'm talking about, so just hear from you know. Just believe the preacher when he says it's those closest to you that can can get hurt the most. Um, I might have brought this up not too long ago. What is it? AA has a thing. A uh, halt. Did we talk about this not too long ago? AA has a thing. Uh, halt. So when you, when you start to lose it, man, um, HALT. And so HALT stands for hungry, angry, interesting one, L, lonely. Lon loneliness is powerful. Uh, uh, loneliness is a force to be reckoned with. And T, what's T? You can guess if you don't know. Tired. If you're hungry, if you're, if you're angry, if you're lonely or you're tired, decisions you might make, you might want to you might want to think about or, or sleep on it a little while, amen. So so uh, Jesus says that the words that we speak have to do with what's going on in our in our hearts. You know, there have been times where I confronted some difficult situation, and man, I breezed through it and went because I'm a Christian. Obviously, years of training, and uh, you know. Jesus lives inside of me, but I'm a really good person, <laughs> right? Then you miss a meal, right? Then you miss a meal, or you go Christmas shopping when it's busy, or, uh, you know, you, you don't get as much sleep as you would have liked, and then you're like, woo, where'd that guy come from? I, I took responsibility for the other guy, but, but this guy, I don't know what's going on with him. Like, that's really weird. That's not, that's not like me. I hope that's not like you, but... But Jesus says when we say things, it reveals what's, what might be going on uh, deeper inside of us, right? Um, there's an expression I, I love. It's sad, but hurt people hurt people, right? If you're wounded, if you're damaged, if you're broken, um, we sometimes feel that it's fair to do that, do that to other people. And uh, so we want to be careful about that and, and intentional about the words that we speak. So I want to encourage you to... Uh, to uh, not speak words that uh, are reminiscent of some of the sweaters that you're wearing. Are we ever going to have a contest on this? I think if we, it hasn't been official. I think I won two weeks in a row. I'm not sure, but I think two weeks in a row. I, uh, if I can do anything, it's ugly. I mean, ugly, ugly is right in my wheelhouse, baby. Um, I, can, I can do, I don't even have to try, right, with ugly. Um, so we want to be intentional about the things that we speak and, and be a blessing and be an encouragement to those around us. And uh, the, the, the difference in the things that, 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 that can take place in the lives of those around us if we're intentional about the words that we speak. So that's why I'm, I'm here to remind you. So I, I was going to encourage you to just think of somebody. Just think of somebody, but I can't do it now. But I was going to encourage you to just think of somebody 
that could use a word of encouragement. Think of somebody that's down. Think of somebody that, that could use just a, a text or a call or maybe go out to, maybe go out to coffee and um, just, you know, who knows how much that, that little word of encouragement might, might do for them. So I was going to encourage you to think about that, maybe pray about that. Really the way it probably works for most of us is, is someone drops in our heart, somebody drops in our, on our heart, our mind, and then, and then that's our answer that we know. But now I can't uh, 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 ask you to do that because it would be weird now. Because this morning, Christina comes early. She, she's here so that the worship team stays sanctified during rehearsal. She comes early, right? Like we know our secrets, but she comes in really early and makes sure that we're all behaving and we don't get frustrated. No, she just likes, she just likes to come early. And uh, so she comes up this early, uh, this morning. Now she, she's been coming early for years. It's just, it's just her thing. And uh, so she comes up and she says, hey, pastor. Remember, preachers exaggerate. Remember, you got to keep that in mind. She says, hey, pastor, I just want you to know, man, these sermons have been amazing. And, and your preaching has just been phenomenal, just so good. Some of you were near. It wasn't off by, I'm not exaggerating much, am I? Like, she's like, you're sir, not the sermons. Oh, you heard, yeah. You're like, no, you're not exaggerating. Your sermons are phenomenal. I'm not exaggerating what she said. It was, it was, I'm not, I'm not overdoing it. And she's like, that's just been so good, man. Just, it's been great. And I'm like, and so, because I, I do have a sinful nature, part of me went, how'd you get a hold of my sermon? <laughs> Because I wanted to encourage you to do that. Because, like, you know, like, I think it's a good idea. But you're doing it. You're already doing You're living it. It's pretty. But, real, that's cool, right? Like, how on the morning did I'm like, it's in my notes. Encourage them to think of someone and send them a Be an encouragement to someone. And then she comes up. Now, she's friendly every Sunday. But every Sunday, you know, I'm not saying that you should. But, you know, you just do with this what you will. Um, <laughs> but every Sunday, she's not coming up going, the sermons have been so great. The service and the services, not just the sermons, but she said services too. So that's all of us. That's everybody, right, team? That's all, everybody doing anything uh, here at Lakeside. And she said, it's just been amazing. And I thought, ah, pastor power. <laughs> and, then, and then she went to the worship team. Yeah. And the worship team has just been doing such a great job. And I stopped listening because, you know, I thought it was just about me. Um, but I, I know she went to a few different people and said, you know, you sang that one song. And I'm like, how did she know? <laughs> Seriously, it's right. I can show you the notes. How did she know to do that? And she just did it. And, and I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't hear all of it. Um, but, but I know that she said for the whole team, it's been great. And a few individuals, she said, you know, you did that thing or what, that you had that special or whatever. And man, that was amazing. And just like, we could have just had her come up and do that. And then we could have saved ourselves a lot of, a lot of time, man alive. So live like Jesus and live like Christina, right? She's doing it, man. She's doing it. Like, Hey, you don't have to do any more this week. You're good. You did like, I don't know, like uh, there's a, you got a lot of people covered. So um, just comes, uh, maybe it just comes naturally for her. So I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, I'll still encourage you to do it. Um, even though it's like, now I'm copying her idea. Uh, no, that was, what a cool thing. What a cool thing that she did that on a day that, that I wanted to encourage you to do that. So, um, all right. Uh, you get the idea. I'm going to be quiet now. Um, yeah, there. Uh, and I'm going to ask brother Jim White. <laughs> to come up and he's going to share um, a word about communion with us. Yeah, right. yeah the internet might just go on.